cameras and computers. What are we talking about today? Hey, can I start with Mobility Wad? Hanging out with Matt Vincent. What's up, guys? Um, let's do so. People know about your knee story. All right, so my knee is just this side of ruined. Um, I've been without an ACL for eight years and have competed pretty heavily and trained pretty heavily on it since trashing it. I've had it repaired once before. Uh, the meniscus went last February. Uh, MRI shows partial torn PCL, partial torn MCL. I have very little meniscus left. I got it scoped in March. I'm going to have another surgery here in September to repair the ACL, implant cartilage, and clean out a lot of bone parts. Yeah. So what I'm hoping to do is kind of give some insight. I get a lot of questions about what my rehab plan is and what I'm going to do after surgery. But I think there's a lot that I can do before surgery to really maximize the benefits of the rehab after. Absolutely. So let's, uh, let's go over kind of a plan. So <clears throat> obviously Matt and I talk a lot. We'll be talking a lot. But there are some basic goals around pre-surgery. Okay. Right? One is understanding that no matter what you do, your tissues are going to be compensating. When the joint itself isn't working right, is in the wrong position, is twisted, is, is pissed, is swollen, you're going to spend a lot of time kind of putting out little fires. Right. Adductor gets tight down by the knee. Right Right here lights up. You know, mm -hmm. that pezan serine. Right, you say, we say, say grace for T, the sartorius, gracilis, semitendinosis, all insert right here. This lights up. Calf is always gonna be tight trying to stabilize. So basically, your body goes through this, this rigmarole of trying to make sure that the joint is mechanically stable. Meanwhile, you're still trying to run on, right? Mm. You're still, and run yeah. on, I mean, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Make it human produce bit. power, throw far. So survive. don't be surprised if you can't get ahead or put all the fires out. There's nothing wrong with you, there's something wrong inside the joint. Right now, okay. first and foremost, do you have any pain in the knee? Yeah. Wait, all the time? Yeah, just the side of all the time, yeah. Just the side. So 24-7, right now your knee hurts? I know that I'm very aware of my knee. What I wouldn't you? call it hurt because I don't know. So that's the issue, is that right? Is that we know sometimes when a joint is deranged, right. it can be swollen, but it's sending strange feedback to your brain that because that for us, you know, that joint is part of that nervous system mm -hmm. in terms of positional sensing, uh, you know, in, in you know your ability to, your ability to generate force the whole thing and it takes an additional I think someone said once like a tablespoon of fluid in the knee to throw off all the really all the mechanics so that brings yeah. us to the to the, the the point one is we want to get you pain free right so when we're trying to get into surgery we're trying to stay pain free and that means there's a lot of people are like hey my knee is toast I'm not going to load it at all but we know that there's a lot of movement that's not going to be painful correct. So let's stay in those ranges, like we talked about yesterday. Hey, so we'll, high squats. High squats. To a box. Tempo. Perfect. Tempo is a big deal, right? And when we say tempo, that means lar largely that we're slowing down. Two, one, holds, two up. And that putting those tissues, time under tension, makes a big difference. Can I get some load? And I may have to slow down. It may not be my most explosive self, but right. I can stay connected. Well, that and it's, and it's very controlled. I'm still over the knee. That's right. So what we're doing is thinking, hey, look, this isn't an ideal situation, but we can still get some work done. Right. Also, additionally, is that you know we can change your stance. It may not be your you know ass to grass stance, but it may be a stance that you can get some work done in. That may sure. be wide, that may be much more narrow. But if you got a hot spot on your knee, you're gonna know. Let's do it, <laughs> right? The the so this pain free range, working on tempo too, you know, is it's in, it's crucial that we address swelling. And one of the reasons we want to make sure that we're staying ahead of swelling and putting that near the top of our list of to-do is that when that knee is swollen, um, it's, really, it's really disruptive to the articular surfaces. And that if we see chronic swelling in the knee, and remember, it's not a mystery to us now why it's swollen, and you've just come through a competitive season, still mm -hmm. have three more events, the idea is we're going to spend as much time addressing that swelling. So the last couple of days you've been compressing, you've been even spinning. Yep. Right? Just let's get the muscles to pump that stuff out. Get blood out of it. Right? Get That's blood all, moving. Blood moving, but also using the lymphatic system to drain the system. Right. right. So understanding that what we see is that when a lot of people have some dysfunction in the knee or dysfunction in a joint, the joint isn't perfect and it swells, they're really comfortable cruising off a lot of swollen swollenness and that, are, that fluid of that 
that swelling in the knee does a poor job of maintaining the health of the knee. In fact, it, yeah. it's a it's a fast track to degradation. Well, That's why we basically take knee what the swelling is doing, right? It's doing that so that it protects the knee. It says, oh, something's up. Let me lock it down." That's one of the reasons. So we see is that uh, you know a swollen joint is can be a stiff joint, right? But also it's the body trying to protect itself. Right. Right. So remember, swelling is never a problem. It's our avail our inability to evacuate the swelling that's a problem. So okay. it tells me, hey, my body's caught in this inflammatory cascade process because it's, there's something going on, right? So it doesn't mean we are going to – and this, this is a time where we're like, hey, you may need you – know, per your doctor, you may need to take some ibuprofen right. and anti-inflammatory to stay ahead of that. Why? Because we're not going to do any more damage to the knee, but swelling all the time is going to cause a problem. Gotcha. Right? And, that, and that's what we see in arthritis or any, any, any dysfunction, especially when you're saying, hey, I'm still going to compete. I'm a big boy, I'm gonna manage this thing, right? So, but swelling means that we're on the Mark Pro. Yep. We are compressing, we're squeezing with Normatec, right? And we're just doing our best to make sure that we're getting in motion that also drains the lymphatic system. So just so we're certain, this is leading up pre-surgery. So this is what I need to do over the next, what I've probably got, six weeks. The surgeon, the physical therapist, does not want to see you with a really pissed off joint. Going into if surgery, you go into surgery idea. with a really hot flaming joint, you're doing you're doing the, those tissues are not going to knit down, right? When when the things distended, you're not going to see good tissue healing. Okay. Right? So a lot of surgeons will be like, hey, get that thing quiet, and then we'll come cut on, right? And uh, so you want to go in there with this as as yes. chilled out a system as you can. But in the real world of saying, hey, I'm going to compete through this, but you got to stay ahead of it. Do so the best. Smash you can a stay bunch ahead. of really heavy front squats. Oh, yeah, for sure. In fact, I would say not even front squats, I'd say full cleans. Yeah. Right? Lunges, walking, overhead walking. Totally, lunges. anything you can do. But um, this is a chance also we say, hey, you know, work on weaknesses. Work on weaknesses. Which means there are some times where you don't need to do, you know, you're not going to squat heavy, nope. but stiff legged deadlifts are going to be on there. We're going to work on your upper body. Work on your positioning, get some you know some conditioning in, right? There's a chance to be like, well, shit, I'm gonna develop a handstand. Right? Yeah, Legit, right, right, right. Keep keep training like an athlete keep and moving. say, if my if my potential windows of the things that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut those down by you know 90 percent. Then that 10 percent, let's get after it. Let's let's develop some skills. You know, it's it's shocking how much development you can get, even though you're not doing the the bread and butter things that you need to do as the, for your core sport. Sure. Right, so we're gonna work on that. Uh, you know, work on weaknesses, manage your swelling. You know, one of the things we want to do is try to go in with as much range of motion as we can. Sure. What? So we want to manage range of motion. Range of motion. We want to optimize that. Now, sometimes you've got a bony block. You've got some loose bodies, which is uh, something <laughs> floating around in the joint that sometimes makes it more fun to, yeah, to they're you really can't go. Cool. Right. But the idea is, how can I keep my brain? working in these pain-free ranges, and that can even be passive, that can be working in the pool. Sure. Right? Uh, here's a good example, our friend Laird Hamilton um, had a pretty ugly hip joint. And I haven't said this publicly, but it's the ugliest hip I've ever seen, of all time ever. And he's like, hey, what do you think about MRI? And I said, to me, <laughs> for this season, it looks like you have a beautiful white ball of light in your hip. And all I'm gonna imagine for you is that this white ball of light sometimes gets a little dimmer, but it's a beautiful white ball of light. Yeah. And as soon as you got through the season, I was like, you probably need to have your hip replaced because it's the most disgusting hip I've ever seen. But in the meantime, he was able to maintain a lot of range of motion because he was working in the pool, lunging, unloading yeah, right. positions, but just maintaining it. What we don't want to do is we want to let that window get really, really stiff because then, you know, let's maximize your available ranges of motion in pain-free ranges and effortlessness. And that means that sometimes it's going to be a dose response. Sometimes if you do a little tempo squats, you may not be able to squat the next day. It may be three days later. Yeah. That's what it takes. That's what's been normal. But let's keep the, let's keep the stimulus in there. Right. And I can fix range of motion too. I've noticed, you know, adjusting the seat on the bike when I'm pedaling. That's right. You know, I can get it up a little higher. I can, if it's really stiff that day, I can always put it on the full bottom where I'm almost straight at the bottom and really minimize the knee. That's right. You know, and part of that, you know, being pain free and maximizing range of motion is working upstream and downstream. And this is always a reminder that, you know, you don't have to necessarily just address the tissues at, you know, like the quads and the calf, that this is a chance yeah, to obvious. really go looking to how do I improve the, the global health? And so yeah, if sure. I just work up the chain. Yeah, go to hip flexor, go to your ankle, go to your Achilles. That's right. Go to because your psoas. all of those things are contributing to this compromised state. And we're looking at, hey, this is a chance for me to optimize the entire global system sure. in ways because your programming has become very, very simple.
Yeah. Right. It really is like, hey, I'm going to stay in this range of motion. Uh, I'm not going to be doing heavy full cleans. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, high bar back squat. Yep. Right. If that's such a thing for you. Yeah. Low bar. Yeah. Low bar. Like you, put the, squat, you put the like bar like, like right. Yeah. Here. Right above my, right above my tramp stamp. <laughs> just Obviously, sits right there and just, just hold right, her in. Squat. Isn't that squat like Fred Hatfield? It's the best. Like he would just yeah. he would squat and then not take it out and never stand all the way up again. Per. No disrespect. <laughs> all right. So really, the goal is how can I maintain range of motion? Can I maintain terminal knee extension for your knee? Can I extend my knee? Can I keep an eye on that to make sure the quad's still working? That's right. And one of the things that we're big fans of, obviously, was with our use with the Mark Pro, is that neuromuscular contraction keeps the thing, keeps the musculature connected to the brain. Right. Right. And that's a big deal. What ends up happening, we see, is that people get on the ibuprofen, cut those connections of pain. Ice. The ice. And the ice is a, is a disaster because it really does shut that relationship down and recongest the tissues. Right. So what we're looking at now is, is pre, is how can I get you into a healthy state as possible? with the, the tissues doing what, we're, what they can handle, which may be a huge reduction of volume. And here's the big deal. This is a chance to clean up what we call the biopsychosocial, AKA lifestyle. And how do you control what you can control? You have to, so, I can, I'm still gonna be, so if I'm pretty stationary, right? What can I still do? I can still not eat like an asshole. True. I can make sure I'm getting enough fluid. Right. I can make sure my leg is elevated when it should be and I'm running the Mark Pro. And you can do what? Control your diet. Yep. Right? And sleep. And you can really set yourself up for saying, hey, look, let's treat this surgery event like a huge competition. I'm going to optimize myself so that I'm going to remove stress. Ready to go into I'm it. ready to go. And my tissues are as healthy as I can be and I have a plan coming out. And this lifestyle piece, you know, a lot of times when athletes are injured, there, you know, our whole sense of self is tied up into the joint. It's tied up into our ability to function. And when you take that away, a lot of athletes sometimes don't have the requisite pieces to feel like they're intact. Right. And they lose their sense of control. I can't train every day. Or I can't train the way I want to train. So what can you control? And the more pieces we feel like we give back to the athlete, here's a chance to mess around with ketosis. Here's a chance to, yeah. you know, try to eat, you know, eight fistfuls of vegetables every day. John try Berardi. to figure out if I can do 100 push-ups. 100 push-ups. And that really brings us to this last piece. Let's set some goals. So let's set some... Pre-surgery goals. Yeah. And this is this is maybe how I'm going to do 30 strict pull-ups, right? I'm going to strict press my body weight. You know, the, there are some things I know we can do, but we need to set some far out goals. And that allows us to then focus our training, focus our thinking yep. around getting something done. And look, it doesn't have to be anything spectacular. You know, you're going to be locked out in a brace because of this Oates procedure, mm -hmm. which is when they basically go in and try to repair everything that, that, that articular mm -hmm. surface. And, you know, like, can you hold an L-sit for a minute, right? Those are the kinds of things I want to set, you know, can I perform, you know, 50 pull-ups in two minutes, right? Can I... Right, I mean, hundred strict push-ups. Right, those are the things that we should be putting out there, and then, and then obsessively training about, and, and starting a little journey on that. But we find that when we give our athletes a chance to optimize their lifestyle, control the sleep, become a ninja, work on these things, the fact that you're injured or going to have a surgery means that you've become a specialist. It means that you get to unfocus, deload all of the basic work things that typically are important to us and we get to focus on all the details. And sometimes what we don't do is focus on the details, right? right. We're focusing on, hey, I squatted heavy today and I, I'm working, but now I'm not gonna be able to squat as heavy, so I'm gonna work on some of these other things. For me, a huge, huge component of this is I'm also thinking about what is my lifestyle gonna look like afterwards and I think you have to have an assault bike. Yeah, that's already in the cards, it's in the works. And, and the reason is that I have three limbs. I can keep you metabolically intact. I can also up your insul insulin sensitivity, right, by, by making sure that we're, we're smoking it. Yep. And if I have three limbs, it's good enough. And I can't tell you how important it is to know that you have a bridge afterwards. If you don't, if you're going into surgery and don't have an assault bike, you need to sell one of your kidneys while you're in surgery get and get one. And uh, 
Um, our good friends at Power Speed Endurance have a wonderful six week post surgery protocol. Nice. We can test. I'll, uh, I'll grab that and I will link below. It's totally cheap, but it's based on your own output. Nice. So you can do a test afterwards with three limbs, right? You're not comparing yourself to your like full four limbed self, three limbs, and then you can test that and actually progress. And that allows us to, hey, during this time, I'm going to do some hard conditioning. Right? And that conditioning can be done in a way that protects my knee, but also makes me feel like I'm covered in sweat and feel like an athlete. 